Okay, now checking on my stage. I go about three frames back. I go from here to here to here to here, right? And now he's going to stay somewhat still. I'm going to move him maybe just a tiny bit, maybe even just with warp, just so it looks like he's kind of breathing in and out, shifting back, but very slight in the movement, so like that. And now his eye... The eye squint's going to get less opaque, and the eye bulge is going to get bigger. I'm actually going to maybe rotate it a little bit. Hmm. It's looking oblong. I don't like that. Let me warp it a little bit. Yep, that's nice. And then the mouth, let's see. I'm just going to shift it a little bit. Just so it stays dynamic. Uh, maybe not that much. Now the difference between just drawing, compositing, you know, making an interesting scene or character. The difference between that and animating, animating is all about storytelling and acting. And you have to do a lot of kind of looking in a mirror and understanding how certain things work to tell the story in the most visual way possible. All right, so I think I'm gonna go from here to here with my creature. And I wanna play with the lighting. Nothing else needs to stop. You know, I want to play with the atmosphere and the mist and the reflections on the water. I think I'm going to leave the coral alone now, but maybe I will play with the hands just slightly. I'll just warp them slightly. And then the cloud. And then the stars. So lots of little elements. But the main star is what's in my storyboard sketch. It's the transformation of the creature that's going to start to happen. And one other thing I can do, not only is the eye bulging, but what I can start to do now, and this is a lot of fun to play with, is to play with the layer style of my creature. So for instance, he's going to be breathing fire, right? What if he kind of turns orange? Like that's extreme cartooniness, right? But I can make it pretty subtle. This is like a little flush to him, right? And if I think that's too strong, I can always add a gradient. <laughs> and so let's make this, let's see, not reflective, let's make it radial. So he's going to have a, a weird flush, a weird coloring to him. It's going to be really slight. And what's great is because it's a layer style, I can turn it on and off. And I can actually take its overall opacity down. So for instance, I'm just going to make it so subtle, this color change. But in the animation, it's going to make a difference. OK. So now I'm going to hold down Option, go to Layer, Merge Visible, select All, Command-C to copy, go to my stage, Command-V to paste. Now I'm going to deselect, delete that layer, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, to really call attention to the eye. I'm going to bring the eye at 100%, and then the eye squint at 100%. So it goes back to this.
Let's move the ice quint down. Well, maybe I liked it where it was. Let's see. Okay, so it's going to go from this to this. And I'm going to move the creature a little. Again, just with warp. Kind of shift it around the eye. Warp the feet a little. So they're shuffling a tiny bit. And now he's not feeling so great. I'm going to bring up the coloring a couple percentage points. So it goes from this now to this. And now I get to play with the other things. Moving those clouds, rotating those stars. Holding down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Select All, Command C to copy it all, Command V to paste it in. All right. So he's starting to change color. His eyes go back to normal a little bit just so I can now hit it with a really big, crazy eye and color and change of pose. So it's kind of the double take view of things. It's gonna set the environment a little differently. Okay, so now I take the eye squint off completely Gonna even grow the eye a little bit more. And then we're gonna really play up the color effects. I'm gonna change the blending mode here. He looks even more ill. Maybe that's too strong. Let's see. There we go. And I'm going to move the body a little bit. And I'm going to go back to Puppet Warp because I want to really change this. And he's going to rear up. Maybe even shift a foot. So now we're really going to notice. I'm going to close his mouth. Oh, let's see. No, I guess his mouth was closed. I'm going to let it open. And fix the other things. The cloud. The stars. And I hold that option, I say layer, merge visible. I go to select all, I copy it, I paste it over to the stage. 
All right, so now's a good time to run an animation test because I'm basically uh, to right here where the eyes are fully bulged. I've gotten halfway through. So I'm gonna save my stage and then go to Window, Timeline. And then I'm gonna to go to the Window Options and I'm going to say Make Frames from Layers. Then I'm going to hold down Shift, select all the frames. All this does is program this eyeball. I'm gonna set the timing so that it plays each frame for 0.3 seconds, roughly three frames per second. Play it through forever. Here we go from the beginning. Zoom in, eats, and then his eyes blink and hold kind of crazy. I do notice that the side has a little alignment issue, so I can fix that with cropping at the end. But I am also noticing that the cloud moving is nice and the stars moving is nice. And the, the little textural things are nice of the atmosphere. They're subtle, but they're going to make a lot of move, uh, difference as it moves and plays through. Okay. So far, so good. So now, in order to add more frames, I need to select all of these frames, the programs for the eyeball, and drag them to the trash. I can't hit delete. If I hit delete, it will actually delete the content from the layers. And so to protect it, I'm going to then hide the timeline again until I'm ready for my next animation test and hit save if I'm ready. Okay, now I deselect from my assets. I delete that layer and I think, okay, I want to keep the eye that way, but maybe I want to change the color of it a little bit. So I'm going to adjust the hue saturation of the eye. I'm going to brighten it up and change the pupil a little bit. So that it keeps looking dynamic as it's changing, right? And then increase the contrast a little bit. There's all kinds of things you can do that we're going to notice as things move. Makes it look a little shinier, a little more cartoony, right? I'm going to um, dial down. Well, no, I kind of like this color effects. So maybe I'll, I'll up them just a little bit. And I'm going to start to make him glow a little bit. So I'm going to use outer glow to make it a little noisy. I'm going to spread it out, make it bigger. But I don't want white. I want something that looks kind of warm. And subtle, like that. It would be even noisier, more broken up. And then I'm going to take its opacity way down. And especially because that overlaps the feet and the mouth, it's going to kind of come before the fire and make sense. Okay. So that's a big change. I'm going to change the body positioning a little. This time, I guess just with warp, keep it simple. Just kind of a heaving. So from that to that, let's move the eye a little bit as well. Let's move the feet a little bit. So we're just playing with all of our toys here. Okay, so now with this change in the coloring and the glow, our character looks truly kind of flushed and disturbed. I might um, change the eye size a little bit.